Hey guys, it's Lion here with Hobbies of Man once again, and today we're going to be doing a comic book review. We're going to be looking at Conan the Barbarian by Titan, uh, and we're going to be looking at both the free comic book day issue and the new issue one that recently came out. These are the standard covers for both, I think. Actually, I think free comic book day doesn't have, uh, you know, variant edition, so yeah. Um, but here you go. So uh, my stance on Titan is kind of difficult to, to explain. On one hand, I really like them. I really like what they've done with uh gun honey that series is completely theirs it's really really good it's really enjoyable i like heat seeker um but they kind of fumbled the bag with some of their manga uh stuff because uh with common writer kuga the manga that uh is based around the common writer kuga tv show um it's a really good story it's really interesting but it was machine translated which means that it was using it's, it's not using ai don't think that but it is using kind of just google translate and then uh, it was attributed to a real person. So everyone went in with the idea that it was gonna be translated by someone that's real. It was gonna be looked at and worked on well, and it actually wasn't. It was very clearly machine translated. It was badly lettered. Uh, There's a lot of issues with that. Eventually Titan decided, uh, Titan and Stonebot, decided that they were gonna rework it and make it better. I'm not sure if they have yet. Um, so I haven't been buying that series, which sucks because I was really, really interested in getting in, into it and it's uh, disappointing. They also messed up another Kamen Rider uh, series by releasing a Kamen Rider Zero series that was not very uh, well made. It was not well thought out. And it was actually, as far as I understand it, uh, disparaging of the actual source material. So that's pretty bad. So I'm pretty middle of the road when it comes to Titan, but I think they knocked it out of the park with these Conan the Barbarian uh, issues. So uh, I'm gonna talk about this one first and then I'll talk about this one. Um, in terms of my history with Conan, uh, I don't have much of a history with Conan. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, um, but I'm very interested in his mythos. I am aware of a lot of his stories. I've never actually sat down to read them, but I understand the general vibe of Conan quite well. Uh, from a lot of uh, content that I've consumed over the years uh, that talks about it, right? So yeah, I will buy the uh, Conan the Sumerian uh, Del Rey collection at some point. I think I'll, I'll buy the, the first uh, book in that series uh, here in September because there's gonna be like a, a booktube event that talks about reading it. So I think I'll, 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 uh, I'll do that. Right now I'm reading Cole. And um, I've watched the movies, you know, kind of your general basic uh, in intro level kind of knowledge of Conan. Um, so to me, continuity in terms of Conan doesn't really matter too much because I'm not aware of it yet. Uh, it will obviously matter to me later when I have read the novels, they're the original short stories actually. Um, but uh, right now I'm just happy to be invested in this sword and sorcery story. And so um, I think they did a good job with that because this doesn't really fall into the continuity. Like it is part of the continuity in the sense that the stories that are told here take place between the stories told by Robert E. Howard. And so it is just building up the mythos. Um, but uh, you don't have to know anything about Conan to read these because everything that is part of Conan is going to be explained here as it becomes relevant, right? So um, yeah, the team working on this is actually Jim Zub, who I know from a previous Conan story, I think he did with Marvel, uh, Rob De La Torre, uh, oh, De La Torre, uh, who is a very good artist. He does a really, really good job. And uh, he does a really interesting paneling here, which uh, might be kind of influenced by uh, European comics. I'm not really sure. I don't know where Rob is from, but uh, his last name implies that he's probably from Spain or something. And there's a lot of Spanish artists that are working in the comic book industry today that are really, really good. And so I, I'm assuming he's one of them. Uh, and the, art, the color, sorry, is applied here by Jose Villarubio. Uh, who doesn't do a horrible job. I think he, he does good, but it doesn't really help distinguish a lot of things in terms of the uh, the way things look, but I don't really have a problem with that, but it is something that uh, I've seen brought up and that I kind of struggled with initially because I felt like there was a lot on the page and uh, I'm not used to that. So it was kind of difficult to adjust to reading this, but once I did, I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it looked really, really good. And uh, the lettering here is done by Richard Starkings. Uh, and he does pretty good with that. So yeah, issue zero, the free comic book day issue, which I think you can download uh, for free on Comixology, opens with the Nemedian Chronicles, you know, the Oh Hither Came Conan uh, spiel that they always give you at the beginning of Conan stuff. Uh, and then there's a map, which is really, really nice. And then uh, it ends with uh, this little section called On the Road of Kings, 
which introduces uh, Conan to you, kind of tells you, hey, this guy's from Samaria, he's been here, he's been there, he's on his road, uh, kind of on, on this adventure, on this wanderlust kind of uh, vibe that he has going on. And uh, the legend starts at Venerium, where the Sumerians have teamed up, 40 tribes of Sumerians have teamed up to fight off some southern uh, invaders who are coming up to, to take this land away from them. And so uh, this is where Conan becomes a man and uh, where he becomes a warrior and where he grows jaded and wary of war and fighting. Um, and so he, he, he manages to defeat his southern invaders. He manages to save his people in some way and uh, then he decides to go on his travels. And that's basically what the issue is about. It's a very clear, concise, uh, here is where Conan starts and here is where he will go. And a lot of images that are shown at the back of the uh, book are actually depicting different uh, stories from Conan's time. I think the Frost Giant's daughter is depicted there. Uh, something about uh, Valeria and, uh, and Bellet are also uh, mentioned in, in, in those pieces of artwork. So. That's basically what issue zero is about. It's really, really good. I really enjoy it. I think the artwork is really, really great. It kind of has this like Frazetta-esque vibe or maybe Buscema-esque vibe. Uh, I don't know. It just looks real, real nice. So that's it for issue zero. Issue number one uh, opens again with the map and the Median Chronicles. And then uh, it also has the On the Road of Kings snippet. And then it opens on Aquilonia's northern uh, rural area uh, in a place called Hollers Rome. Uh, where Conan's fighting uh, his mercenary captain uh, who basically disregarded his men's lives. He put them in danger. Some of them died and he doesn't care. And so Conan is rather upset with this and he's fighting with his mercenary boss. He actually manages to defeat his boss and decides to quit this company. And so uh, he gets his, uh, his payment, his dues, and uh, some of the other men that see him fight uh, decide to honor him for honoring their dead by giving him their shares as well. And so Conan has come into a lot of cash here. And so he decides to um, head out. But before he heads out, he decides to sit down to eat some uh, food and drink some beer at the tavern that they're at. And uh, he gets approached by this tavern wench who is trying to put the moves on him. And uh, basically this is done in order to uh, give us a setup for where Conan is right now. He's kind of brooding he's kind of just sitting down remembering his time and some of the things here i think are actually referencing the zero issue um but I, I i can't distinctly remember and i didn't bother checking before this so i might be wrong there but he is kind of remembering some of the stuff that he's been doing and uh as he's kind of getting through this moment uh dark tidings arrive this guy shows up he knocks down the door he's like be careful things are coming stuff is happening we're all in danger we should leave um, the sky darkens and the silent, uh, and the, the world grows silent around them. And then out of nowhere, this gorgeous Pictish woman shows up wearing, uh, her kind of like tattoos or paints, uh, her body paints, I guess. Uh, and she has this band of blue across her eyeballs. Uh, and, uh, she heralds the arrival of these, uh, evil warriors that are coming to, to destroy this, uh, this place. And, and no one listens to her partially because she's a pick, uh, very clearly by her, her, her dress and her, her vibe, but also partially because they don't believe what's going on, which, uh, uh, to me, it seems a little bit weird because they clearly know that darkness is coming. Obviously the sky darkened and the world grew silent. Um, but also because of their prejudice, they're not willing to listen. And so, um, by the time that Conan gets around to understanding what's going on, it's too late. And so this army of zombies basically shows up and starts hacking away at Howler's Rome. And so Conan goes to battle and he respects the Pictish woman who we later learn is called Brisa, uh, or Brisa, I guess, to, um, he, he respects her for, for trying to save their lives. And so when she is overrun by these uh, zombie uh, warriors, he decides to save her. And so Conan and her end up being the only ones that survive this uh, onslaught of this undead uh, army and uh, put to fire Howler's Rome and um, try to escape. And so we get a moment of them interacting. We get them talking. Uh, there's no kind of, uh, you know, your traditional Conan scene where he kind of puts the moves on, on this uh, chick uh, yet, but I'm, I'm sure it will happen eventually. 
in the story. Um, but so far, he's just talking to her. He's showing her respect. He's showing her that, you know, he's appreciative of what she tried to do. He tries to learn more about her. They introduce each, uh, themselves to each other. Conan the Sumerian, Brisa the Pict, uh, from the Gunari tribe, I think is what she said. And, um, well, she tells him, these, this army of the lost, this undead army, took my, my whole world from me. And so I'm trying to shoulder the burden of making sure that no one else has this situation happen to them. So I ride out in front of them, chasing them, in order to try to, to, to tell the rest of the world before they fall to it. And so um, it's a very thank, thankless job and one that is pretty unlikely to succeed, but it is what it is. It is what she has decided is her burden. And so Conan respects that and he's like, well, let us go north to Sumeria, which is near here. And um, we can get my countrymen, he says, to, to, to help us fight this, this horde. And the reality is that she follows him, but she tells him it's too late. They are already in Sumeria. And so then we see this, uh, this picture or this image of the same thing that happened to Haller's Realm ha happening farther north in the snow uh, to people that look like Conan, people that are uh, clearly supposed to be Sumerians, right? And so um, that's basically it. And that's where it ends. And um, I, I am really happy with this book. I thought it was great. I loved, loved the artwork a lot. I enjoyed the story. I thought it was really, really good. It had really great pacing. Uh, and it was just really, really enjoyable overall. I really had a good time with it. And this is going to be one that I'm constantly going to make sure to pick up. Uh, something that I'm going to tell my, my local comic book store to get me for the, for the foreseeable future. And I'm going to be pretty interested to see how the Savage Sword of Conan comic that comes out uh, in January, I think, uh, is going to be and what they're going to do and, you know, how it's going to all tie in. Um, and so it is what it is. Um, something else. Um, I, I recently saw a video by Todd Luck, who is a channel that I follow pretty uh, religiously. I really like his content. I really enjoy what he talks about. Um, he mentioned that he was sad that uh, they didn't um, adapt the Conan stories. And well, Jim Sub said that they weren't going to do it because a lot of people have already adapted them uh, as it is, and there's really no point in doing that. And I understand both sides of it. Uh, if you're interested in uh, Conan retellings, uh, well, Ablaze has a non- uh, like a non-licensed version. They're called the Sumerian, and they're all basically the stories of the uh, the Robert E. Howard stories. At least I think the ones that are uh, able to be published without you know paying rights to anyone. And they they seem pretty good. I've not read them myself, but I've been eyeing them for quite a while. They're very nice looking, and Ablaze is a pretty good publisher. They do a pretty good job with their stuff. And I think those are the the Sumerian comics are actually European comics that have been brought over by Ablaze. So check those out. Um, but that also brought to me the idea that, hey, if uh, Jim Zub and uh, Rob De La Torre don't want to make their monthly series adaptions, maybe it would be really, really cool if they make original graphic novels based on those stories and just release them as they are. Just release a graphic novel uh, every couple months that depicts this story and then have... Uh, like a page where it tells you, okay, these these are the stories. This is the t the chronology or the chronology, the storytelling, the timeline. Uh, these are where all of the stories that we have currently published monthly go. And so you get this updating list of things that go along as you buy these graphic novels. I think that'd be really really cool. I think that'd be a really nice way to tie them in. And honestly, I hope that Conan involves also other characters. I would really like to see. Uh, Brian McMorn and uh, Cole would be interesting to see if he if he shows up uh, in you know the savage sort of, of Conan tales uh, and if they expand this license to include other Robert E. Howard heroes so that'd be really cool overall I think that'd be probably the best way to do it just having original graphic novels that are sold in the graphic novel format from the get-go instead of being serialized and then turned into graphic novels and just uh, have those there make this like the Titan collection uh, and have them be like, you know, the, the Robert E. Howard stories turned into graphic novels um, and then move on from there. Um, but I don't know. I think the, the only thing that they really need to do, I think, is keep up with this really, really great art style um, for all of the titles. I, I don't necessarily mean have Rob De La Torre do all of them. What I mean is to have a few artists that are consistently pretty good, that have a pretty similar style, that fits this kind of Bushema, Frazetta-esque vibe. 
and uh, have them all work on these Conan titles. So yeah, those are my two cents on Conan. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought. And thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you guys later.